Okay, so we're going to now do a desert setup. And in order to do the desert setups and kind of create more fun than kind of just the real, as I always call them, two-dimensional flat desert tanks, uh, we use our excavator clay. So excavator clay is a moldable clay that you get wet and then you kind of create it into the shapes that you want. We're gonna use some of the cork and Mopani to kind of create some terrain uh, utilizing it. Uh, but it's great, you can kind of dig through it, you can kind of have some fun with it. Uh, but it gives us a really nice uh, building surface to be able to go with. Again, laying it out, I'm gonna use the cork to give us some tunnels for the animals that we put inside of here. We're doing just kind of a generic desert setup here. Uh, my mind says this is gonna be young beardies, big leopard geckos, Euromastic, something like that. You know, something that's gonna need some caves to go into. Uh, but we're also gonna try to create a nice basking spot so we can kind of come up and have some uh, utilization out of it. Uh, like I said, a lot of people do this really two-dimensional uh, excavator setups, and we end up without a place, or uh, two-dimensional desert setups. So we use the excavator so we can get better basking spots, better places for the animals to go. We want to kind of create kind of a place for the animals to be able to go. Going to do a little bit of that backfill, kind of like I did on the uh, paludarium, just so that way they don't kind of hide out on the back of it, can't escape through it. We sell the excavator, uh, five pound, 10 pound, 20 pound, what we call the cavern kit. Um, I kind of jokingly, affectionately call it excavator for dummies. It's for those people that just don't know where they're gonna kind of go with it. It's that great kind of starting point. We give you 12 pounds of excavator in there. We give you some tools to kind of use for sculpting and molding, um, some of that kind of stuff to kind of get you going. But hopefully this video definitely helps give you some other ideas as well. A metal spoon is a good trick that I learned from uh, my buddy Honest. Our Canadian sales rep, how, how's it going on? Hopefully you see this, uh, know that I learned something from you. Um, it works perfectly for digging holes. Um, it's small enough that you can kind of get inside and dig a hole, but it also works for them when you need to go back inside and kind of smooth that hole back out. And so it's a, a nice little tool to kind of keep in the box when you're trying to build up the excavator. My suggestion for you is six cups is probably right about where you're going to need to be. Every bag of excavator seems to be a little bit different. The, the, the clay holds back water a little bit differently. So when you make this, always start with a little bit less water because um, you can always add more. If you get it too wet, it's going to kind of become a, a messy uh, build for you. So you don't want to go that way with it. Kind of the easy way to look at it is if you make about a meatball size uh, uh, clump of it, it should just hold and kind of work for you that way and you shouldn't feel any moisture sticking off of it. When you do this, as you can tell it gets nice and dirty. Uh, I normally wear a wedding ring. So, yes, yes. If you do wear any sort of hand jewelry, I would definitely take it off. You don't want this clay getting stuck in there. It washes off really easily, but it's still just a pain. So I use the uh, the flat tub, like this ARS tub. Uh, a lot of people will use five gallon buckets. And the problem that you get is when you try to dump the water on top of a pile of excavator in a bucket, it just sits on top and you can't mix it very well. And so we do the, the real nice flat bucket like this, the tub, uh, Rubbermaid tubs, any of the different things work, ARS tubs obviously work. And it gives you a really nice uh, flat area to mix in all the water and so that way you know you're getting a good mix. Uh, otherwise, you'll inevitably always end up with a corner of it that never got any water, some of it gets too wet, and it just doesn't mix up properly for you. What you do is make sure we've got a nice basking spot. Uh, so I do have this piece of Mopani wood. I'm gonna work into the setup and kind of just have it coming up. We have a crossbar on this tank, so we wanna have it coming off to the sides. So we can put our heat lights on there. We can just get a nice basking spot you know, for whatever animal we put in here. We're kind of mentioning, you know, your mastics would love this kind of a setup. Your dragons are good for this setup. We just need some place that they can go up and they can bask. In that instance, what we do recommend that they do if they're going to do an excavator setup and they want to keep the humidity is do eco earth and mix in a little bit of sphagnum moss in with it. Okay. And you can pack that in kind of underneath under okay. here and it'll give you kind of that humid hide area that they can go into.
and try to give extra places for them to climb, extra places for them to hide, um, but making sure that they don't knock anything down, don't wreck it all around. What we do is we're just trying to create a nice little tight edge along here so we don't have excavator running all over the place. I like the stand because it creates a nice little contrast, but then... Exactly. It'll stick to the clay. So what we do is take a little bit of this, oh. sprinkle it on there, and so just gives extra color to that. Like and so it does big. doesn't as look as <laughs> so it doesn't look like it's just a brown drab desert. So usually we see Euromastics, they'll have a habahut, a little log, something they can hide under, and then the rest of it's left open because they just think of flat desert. But those animals naturally are burrowing all the time. They're going down, they're digging out caverns. So we want to be able to give them something that they can utilize. Designed all of these so there's a back end to them so they can't get out of them, makes it easy. So if you do need to remove them out of there, it's, it's real nice and easy access. But we've got a, a natural basking spot. We've got a, a 3D kind of effect to it. We can just give them more space to use. So rather than just having the flat ground of a 40 breeder, 36 by 18, we've taken half of that and raised it all up. So we've just increased that space and given you a lot more to do with it. Awesome.